Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the follow-up video to the skins video that I did a couple of weeks ago. Now, I showed you the complicated slash difficult way of giving your players the ability to apply skins to their in-game items. I wanted to show you that first, A, because it's free, and two, because it's the harder way to do it. But today, I'm gonna go over the easier way, the much more convenient way, and probably the more preferred way of doing it. So stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it. Hey guys, welcome to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you all of the insider tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. If you like this video or you find it helpful in the least bit, be sure to smash that thumbs up for me. If you wanna see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification bells. All right, let's get into skin box from Chaos Code. Yes, this is from Chaos Code, which means it's gonna cost you some money. It's only $17 US, it's not a big deal. And if you think about it, once you've bought it, you own it, you can use it as much as you want, you can do whatever you want with it. For example, I myself own and operate seven Rust servers. Uh, six of them are modded, one of them is vanilla, but I have skin box on six of my modded servers. So if you break that down, that's basically about $3 per server that it cost me for skin box. And it's paid for itself through VIPs and other donations that I get through the servers. It has paid for itself many times over. The $17 is not a big deal, so don't get hung up on the $17. All right, I've already installed the plugin on this test server that we're using. If you've never seen how a plugin is installed, be sure to click on the card in the top right-hand corner. It shows you how to install a plugin and what to expect while you're doing it. There's a couple of things that I wanna go over in the config for Skinbox before, we actually, uh, before I actually show you what happens in the game. Uh, so let's hop right into the test server and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right out of the bag, this is exactly what your config file is gonna look like. And there are a couple of important changes that you need to make in order for it to function, how I assume that you're gonna want it to work. If we were to leave this config file exactly the way it is, you still have a skin box. So in game, you would type slash skin box and it would bring up your box and you could plop an item in there. But this setup that we've got going right now would only allow you to skin something using a skin that you already own. But we want more than that, don't we? We want to be able to give our players skins that they don't have access to. So there's a couple of things we need to do in order to do that. Uh, the first thing is, is this line right here. It'll be line five if you're using Notepad++. So use approved skins and at default it comes false. We're going to change this to true. So basically what this does is it, it will reach out to the workshop and it'll grab all of the skins in the workshop that have already been approved by face punch which is now giving us the ability to skin an item in the game using any skin that has been approved by face punch without actually having paid for it which actually now that i'm saying that sounds a little bit greasy but it's not it's a plugin it's legit and people do it all the time uh, the next line below that is use inbuilt skins which is basically saying allowing the player to use the skins that they already own in their Steam account. And the next line below that is using manual skins. So uh, there's a way that you can actually manually add skins, which is similar to what you saw in the first video, if you watch that video, and I'll put the card up again, just in case you haven't seen it, uh, where you can manually add in whatever skins you want. Because sometimes you might want to be using skins that aren't necessarily approved by Face Punch, but are available still in the workshop. The next section relates to the cooldown period after an item has been skinned. Uh, by default, the cooldown is disabled, but if for whatever reason you wanted to slow it down so that your players couldn't reskin an item one right after the other continuously, you could enable this cooldown, and at default, it's set at 60 seconds. Uh, side note on this is admins, anybody with auth level 1 or auth level 2 would still be able to bypass that cooldown period. This next section is dealing with permissions. So right out of the box, anybody that has the permission to use this plugin will be able to, will be able to skin any item. It's broken down into categories. There's deployables, which is like boxes, furnaces, uh, stuff like that. And then wearables, which is clothes or armor, whatever, and then weapons. So if you only wanted your players to be able to skin their clothes, for example, so we would then change this to true, which is enabling the permissions. And then once we're in the game, which I'm gonna show you the permissions in game as well. And in order to do that, all we would have to do is grant them the permission for skinbox.playerwearable 
but not grant them the permission for deployables or weapons. The next section below that is just dealing with the settings for the plugin itself. And there are a couple of things that we need to pay attention to in this section. So the permission that I referred to earlier, if you want anybody to be able to use this plugin at all, they need to have this permission granted to them, skinbox.use. This section down here, show loaded skin counts. This is what you'll see in the console whenever you reload the plugin or when you first install the plugin. It's gonna show you exactly how many skins it's pulling from the workshop. The next one down here is important because you can change this to whatever you want. So by default, the command is slash skin box. That might not be what you want it to be. Maybe you want it to just be slash skin or slash whatever. You can make it, you can literally make this whatever you want it to be. Um, I like to make it slash skin, so I'm gonna change that right now. Now, line 30 of this config is super important. We need our Steam API key in order to access the Steam Workshop so that the plugin can pull our skins from the workshop. So all you gotta do is click on this link right here. It comes default in there. You don't have to go searching for it. Click on this link. It's gonna prompt you to log into Steam. And if you have Steam Auth enabled on your account, you're gonna have to get your authorization code. It's okay, you guys can trust this. It's just giving them access so that they can use your Steam account to access the workshop. It's fully on the up and up. Don't, don't worry about it. I've done this myself several times. My Steam API key is out there. I'm gonna keep mine protected in this particular situation, um, but don't worry about it. The next two sections are dealing with the different skins that you've added manually, and below that is a section where you can make skins not usable. There are servers out there that are using this plugin. It has given their players the ability to skin doors with a clear skin. And obviously you can see why that might be an issue and why a server owner might not want to have that on their server. So you can put skins in the blocked list so that people can't skin with skins that you don't want. Let's say there's racist skins out there and there are racist skins out there. Uh, you will come across them. So you could block those so that they can't be used on your server if that's something that you decided that you wanted to do. And the last section of the config file that we need to go over is costs. Uh, so by default, it doesn't cost anything to apply a skin to an item, but you can set it up so that you can make it so that your, your players have to pay in order to skin something. There's two different systems that you can use to make it so that it costs your players something to skin their items. One is server rewards and the other one is economics. I have videos on both of those. If you're interested in, in implementing that on your server, you can definitely check out those two videos. But this section here is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, like I said, it's default off, so it's free to skin items by default. Uh, you would actually have to choose to make it cost your players something. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reinsert my API. I'm gonna reload the plugin and then we're gonna jump in game and I'll show you exactly what this looks like and exactly how you can expect it to function on your server. Uh, before we jump into game, I just reloaded the plugin and I wanted to show you guys exactly what I was talking about earlier. So uh, it's it's showing you here the number of skins that we've pulled. Uh, so we, in this case, we've got 1,813 approved skins for 91 different types, as well as 126 inbuilt skins, which is skins that I personally own. Uh, so it's loading all of that information into the plugin so that we can slap some skins on things. All right, let's go into the game real quick and I'll show you how this works in a real life application. Okay, so like I said earlier, the command by default is slash skin box, like that, but we've now changed it to just slash skin. So we can delete that and we can go slash skin. And it just brings up a box where we can plop items in there. And now it's giving us all of these different skins that we can pick from. So you'll notice that there's some default ones in here, uh, probably some pretty familiar skins that you've seen before. Uh, but if you keep scrolling through, you might come across some other skins that maybe you've never seen before. You missed them in the workshop, whatever. Uh, but these are all skins that are available from the Steam Workshop. So that was a deployable. This is a wearable. Uh, so we can literally pick any one of these skins. Actually, I'm gonna pick this one right here because it looks cool. And this is a weapon and any one of these skins, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyways, you get the idea. So this is the section that I was talking about earlier. If we enabled those permissions, 
that made it so that people could only skin like let's say that we only wanted people to be able to skin their clothing and not their weapons we would have had to have enabled the custom permissions in the config file and then granted our group whichever group it is that we wanted the actual permission that we want them to be able to use in this case it's player wearable let's say you're running a vip uh, type of setup and you want all of your default players to be able to skin their clothing but you want your vips to be able to skin their weapons as well as their deployables well that's fine so this is our default group right now we can go into the permissions for our vip and we're going to give them skinbox.use but we're also going to give them skinbox weapon and skinbox deployable i hope this helps kind of clarify the differences between skins from umod and skin box from chaos code uh umod yes umod is free uh you got to put in some legwork in order to make it do anything for your players um skin box from chaos code yes it does cost the 17 dollars like i talked about earlier oh and by the way i need to mention chaos code does not pay me in fact i don't get any recognition whatsoever for mentioning their plugins on these videos so don't think that i'm getting any kickbacks from this i'm not and i have tried and they're not interested another important thing that i need to point out to you guys is that admin panel that you see me use that's showing you uh, the different permissions for each individual plugins the only reason why i show you guys that is because it, it gives you a visual indicator of the permissions that you're applying or revoking from different groups. And, and it just gives, it gives me a way to visually show you instead of just typing on a screen um, how permissions are, are working and, and how they work in groups and stuff like that. That panel that I'm using is another paid plugin. And, and it, by no stretch of the imagination do I suggest that you guys go out and spend a bunch of money on plugins. Absolutely not. Uh, that's not what I'm getting at. It's just a valuable tool for me to show you guys what's going on. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, as you can see, uh, we didn't have to go through and put in a bunch of skin IDs or anything like that. We, we didn't have to mess around with any of that stuff like you had to with skins from umod that is the only reason why i wanted to show you guys this plugin if this interests you i'm going to put a link to it video description down below uh, but remember i'm not getting any kickbacks from this so if you guys do happen to buy this plugin just know that everything is on the up and up and they're not paying me to say this they're not paying me to promote their plugins some of them are very high quality plugins but i'm not getting any kickbacks all right, that's it for this one. I super appreciate everyone's support. Keep them comments coming in. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you join the Discord. There's always a really good conversation. Some of it gets pretty weird sometimes, but there's always good conversations going on in the Discord and everyone is welcome there. Plus it gives me the ability to introduce uh, my YouTube viewers to a group of people that isn't always me that can answer the questions just as good as I can, sometimes even better than I can. So make sure you join that Discord. It's a great resource if you start running into troubles. You should start seeing some boxes showing up on the screen right now. Be sure to check out those other videos. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you click on the round circular button to subscribe to the channel. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.